I've been thinking about that last ending a lot. That was... I Like, I'm still thinking about it. It's been, like, what, two weeks? I'm still thinking about it. Alright. Time has come. I am simultaneously really excited to start to be reaching the end of this and also sad because I'm running out of science adventure games to play. <laughs> <clears throat> but all good things must come to an end. The time has come. The time has come. Nishijo Nanami ga inoru. Ani to tomo ni shuyo sareta bioin. Kega nin ga afureta. マチアイスの片隅に疼くまり実の兄の仕枠茶の手を握りしめて右手の痛みに耐えて目を閉じて祈るもう一人の兄の無事を。くすの木湯が祈る。Start off strong already. Oh my. 倒壊した彼女を許してくれた少年の無事を。岸本綾瀬が祈る避難所となっているふと青い冷たくなった手を握りしめて最後まで素直になれなかった後悔の痛みに耐えて目を閉じて祈る彼女のお願いに不器用ながら答えようとしてくれた少年の無事を先畑リミが祈る冷たい床に横たわりながら彼へ伸ばした自らの手をきつく握りしめて傷だらけの彼の姿を見て感じた湿つけられるような胸の痛みに耐えて目を閉じて祈る自分が守ろうとした自分を助けに来てくれた少年の無事を僕は何もできなかった君が行動したんだその結果として、みんなが君のことを見てきた君という周囲共通認識はとっくに出来上がっているんだ 
これからはいやもうすでに君こそが僕僕は君は誰君は僕僕は君僕なんていない君なんていない。僕は僕じゃない、no. あなたはお兄、oh. Oh. <笑> yes. あなたは西条くん Yes This is, this is... 君はタクミ、yes. あなたはタクミさん、yes. お前は西条だっだっだっ Yes. あなたはタク、yes. 僕は僕、yes. 僕は妄想の存在。ミ。僕はタクその声が聞こえた瞬間に意識が僕を固定した。Already? Already? We're... Already you're gonna hit me with the. Hit me with the absolute jam? I don't know if I'm gonna get it. 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 僕は僕としての形に戻る世界は世界としての形に戻る僕は僕だ My vision became clear again My wounds were healed My top and bottom were connected once more I was standing on my own two feet. The pain was completely gone. My heart was completely at peace. I could see Rimi in the corner of my vision. 
She was safe. She was looking at me. She was crying. Don't cry. And right behind me, space itself was warping. The prayers had been heard. Six Gospels, or perhaps the screams of six souls. Far too innocent, far too dazzling and elegant, far too regal, far too sharp, far too violent, far too destructive, and far too beautiful and terrible. I took them unto myself. The six blades spun. Sorrowfully, or maybe joyfully, they let out a scream. I was not expecting this to start in 10th gear. Oh my god, the ultimate D sword. They fused with my D-Sword. I gripped the D-Sword's handle. I held it tight. I felt its sensation in my hands. My arms were moving. They were completely restored. Yeah, you're done, dude. I looked straight at Norose. To save Raimi, to destroy Noah too. God, this song, dude. Naruse's response was fast. He still didn't have Takumi Nishijo's code sample. He, he thought he'd push the boy to the brink of with a delusion attack, but now the tables had turned almost completely turned. He couldn't let that happen. Norose charged. He brought his D sword up from below. He sliced it across Takumi's chest. The D sword could cut through anything. It didn't matter how hard it was. Cutting a human was no more difficult than cutting through jelly. Narose's lightning fast attack had sliced Takumi in two. But there was no blood. Takumi's lower half almost fell, but it didn't. It was still standing. And in the next moment, it regenerated. Uninjured, as if the attack had never happened. The body that had been sliced apart just a second ago had already grown a new head, a new right arm, and a new right shoulder. Takumi took a step towards Norose. Norose grimaced. He flipped the D-sword over. He hadn't been able to maintain his shape as a human, but he had but he had taken that delusion and made it his own. He wasn't regenerating, he was replenishing. The lost parts were made from the infinitely multiplied dust inside him, formed into flesh and bones. His shape wasn't fixed. Like an amoeba, like a slime, he could change it to be whatever he wanted. That was the reason that Takumi had called himself a monster. His legs took another step towards Narose. Narose's frustration increased. He held the grip of his D-sword and stabbed it out toward the approaching Takumi. The huge scissors, scissors stretched out toward either side of the boy's head. Wrong. Crushed him. A smashed watermelon. Blood spurted everywhere. Takubi's body kept going forward. The regeneration, replenishing, only took an instant. When his foot touched the ground, 
as if nothing had ever happened, as if it had been replaced with a new one. His head was there and undamaged. Nerose understood. He couldn't win. No physical attacks with his D-Sword would be effective. His enemy had taken his delusion attack, his attempt to deny their existence, and turned it to their advantage. In this moment, Takumi Nishijo was... so far beyond human, so twisted in existence, so perfect a monster. But Nerose couldn't give up. He thought of using Nova 2's power to blast Takumi with countless antiparticles. Nothing could withstand collision with antiparticles without turning into negative matter and collapsing in on itself. If destruction from outside was impossible, then he would have to destroy his foe from the inside. Takumi had read Nerose's thoughts. The light of Takumi's D-Sword changed from red to black. Black flames shrouded the blade, it roared, it stretched out. It was as if it was... a huge black snake. It wandered the room, too big for the dome. I don't remember this... I don't remember this track. It's epic. It scraped against the roof. It scraped it up against the floor, as if it was eating away at them both. Devouring them. Yeah, I can't remember if this this is the track that played on the, the first ending or if this is this is it sounds new I don't recognize it the snake's body was composed of any particles particles which would cause anything they touch to collapse in on itself it was an all-devouring torrent of destruction <laughs> Takumi swung the D-Sword where he stood. He pointed the tip at Nerose. God, that's so... That's so cool. It's so cool. The circling snake snapped its body like a whip, and its jaw bit down on Nerose. Nerose had never seen a D-Sword do something like this. Couldn't tell if this was Takumi's delusion or some hidden gigalomaniac power. The black fangs were eating away at his body. He was falling apart. But it was so, so slow, like a frog slowly being devoured in the belly of a snake. The darkness was slowly swallowing him up. He felt no pain. Death should have been instant. Takumi didn't want that. Nerose realized this and laughed bitterly. He wasn't afraid of death. His ideal, the completion of Noah 2, was at hand. In a way, Nerose was the creator of a god. As long as Noah 2 existed, humanity would not go extinct. Nerose's utopia would be realized. But... The snake holding Nerose began to move. It raised his body up high. Hey, Nerose, could you destroy that thing for me? Thanks. Nerose's expression was one of pure shock, but it quickly changed into one of pain. The snake flung his body around in a circle like it weighed nothing. Takumi gave a quick glance at Rimi. Their eyes met. What was she thinking right now? It would be easy to read her mind, but Takumi didn't. Looks like I was able to save you. 
quickly looked away. His gaze was now fixed on Noah too, still emitting its roar. The seed of God, which none could approach. A, a cradle that showed happy dreams. Oh, man. He whispered to no one in particular. This machine would create an eternal paradise. A future without conflict. Now Takumi was about to ruin that future. Whether that was right or wrong, Takumi didn't know. Sacrificing humanity's happiness for the sake of a girl he loved. Takumi drew the hand which held his, his D sword back behind his body. and thrust it forward like a spear. The black snake charged forward in a straight line. Its prey, Norose, was impaled on its fangs as it raced towards Noah too. A spear of pure antiparticles. It had no will of its own. Thus, there was nothing for Noah too to disrupt. The all-encompassing torrent of destruction used Norose as its key and easily broke through the delusion barrier. Oh my god, that's so cool. These all these animated sequences it's thick, dude. Bad ass. At some point, it must have started to rain. Oh, are these going to go on their own? There was a violent explosion. A shockwave. Picked me up like a rag doll and sent me flying. The next thing I knew, I was here. Oh, I can... Okay, I'll go. Those eyes were always watching me. Their gaze passed through the thick black rain clouds and came down on me like rain. Don't look at me. More than the rain's chill, the cold of the rubble beneath my back made my body shiver endlessly. It's so, so cold. And the gaze that bored into me from above the sky, whose it was, I don't know. I lifted my head a little and looked around, seeking a way to escape it. I saw the shattered remains of a city. I saw despair. I saw death. I saw nothingness. Nobody was there. Nobody was moving. Nobody was alive. Was the rain going to keep falling? Until it washed away everything. The living and the dead. Until it had gently submerged everything it swept away? And swept it away. Part of me hoped this was all just a simple delusion, but I guess I wasn't so lucky. My body refused to move. The only things I could move were my head and my eyes, and just barely at that. I couldn't use the monstrous power I'd used just a moment ago. My body was shaking, but that was just an involuntary reflex. It wasn't my will. I didn't want my body to shake. If my body wouldn't listen to me, then it wasn't really my body at all. Maybe it never listened to me in the first place. Nobody knows where the soul is really kept, after all. So who could be sure that my soul was really inside this body. But, if that was the case, then where was I? Was I here? Was I nowhere? In this broken world where nothing moved, I suddenly heard a sound that wasn't the death of rain. The rain of, the death of rain. Rain of death. A single someone came out of the nothingness. Who are you? Do you look so pale because you're cold? Or because you're dead? But she wasn't shivering. She wasn't shivering, and her eyes, which were complete, which were hidden almost completely beneath her bangs. Don't look at me. 
They looked so sad. They also seemed filled with madness. They seemed like they weren't seeing anything at all. If, maybe, the only things in this world were her and me, we kept looking at one another like this forever. Would my world be, the, be only what was reflected in her eyes? And would her world be only what was reflected in my eyes? In her eyes, I was reflected. In my eyes, she was reflected. When I thought about it that way, the world suddenly seemed so much smaller. <gasps> suddenly, I heard static that sounded so pretty. Her head fell forward, and she spread out her hands, as if she was about to take flight toward those rain clouds, or as if she was tr she were trying to m take all the rain into her hands. With her head bent forward, I couldn't see the look on her face from where I lay. What do you what do you look like behind the veil of rain between us? Oh, don't say that. An angel? Are those wings of light a blessing upon me? Or... Oh, now I see. I understand. You're going to use that to kill me, aren't you? Slowly, she dropped to her knees in front of me. She was still bent forward. She embraced my head gently. I felt relieved that she wasn't looking at me and let me take let her take me into her arms. <laughs> She whispered into my ear, the pretty static. <laughs> There's no need to apologize. If I don't disappear, the other me, the real me, will die. So, this is for the best. You're the one to erase me, that's all I need. It's a happy ending for a monster. I have no regrets. I felt something warm, soft, gentle, and sweet. It was like a drug. The faint sensation of her breathing tickled my cheeks. I smelled something so, so very sweet. Suddenly, I felt a pressure on my chest. The huge sword in her hands tore through the skin of my chest, ripped through the meat behind it, slid between the bones, and sank into my body. But her kiss was like a drug, and I felt no pain. Suddenly, I felt sad. Like my tears were going to start overflowing. And to stop myself, I looked over her shoulder at the dull gray, rainy sky. She moved her lips away from me, whispering in a pained voice. The reason I felt no pain was because her sword wasn't real booted. There was no wound anywhere on my body. He'll die. I should be the one to die. Killing me will keep him alive, even if just for a little while longer. That was what Rimi wanted, too, I thought. Kiss <laughs> Rimi shook her head slightly. She was looking at me with tears in her eyes. 
あなたの弱さが好き弱いくせに臆病なくせにボロボロになって私なんかを助けに来てくれた、oh so、その強さが好きなの、okay. One moment. This is awkward. I'll be right back. The mystery offender was my nephew, after all. Well, this is... <laughs> what an awkward place for that. Alright, anyways, moving on. Am I allowed to live? If you choose to live, then I'll live. I heard a voice coming from the sky, and then I knew, because our hearts were linked directly, I could feel it. His life had just ended in that moment. I need to clean my desk. This is ridiculous. Rimi could tell that that was what the expression on my face meant. Ruining this beautiful moment with my incompetence. I hesitated for a moment before giving her a weak nod. I want you to cry. The feeling was returning to my body. The warmth was coming back. My movements were still stiff. I was still shivering. But my hands could move now, so I took the red handkerchief out of my pocket. There were tears running down Remy's face. They were so pretty, so clear. I wiped away the tears, the memories you gave me. 
君が好きです」Yumi took my hand and held it tight, as if trying to make sure that we were both here. The warmth infected me, for warmth and mine became one. Two people looked up at the sky, it was still covered in rain clouds. But. It's also a particle. They were words that only he and Rimi knew. They were the words he'd used to give Rimi hope. But I knew them. I had seen his memories. He and I were one mind and two bodies. His memories and mine were shared. I'd inherited all the memories he had from the past 17 years. And he'd experienced everything I had for the past year and a half. We knew that color. We'd looked up in, at that mental in that mental world with nothing but sea and sky and stared at it to make sure we'd never forget it. Suddenly, the rain stopped. The clouds vanished in an instant. A clear blue sky. It had come back. The sky that went on forever. The sky that gently covered the world. That blue sky. Oh, I get it. Really? Already? Wow, it is, it, that was way shorter than I thought. I, li I thought it was gonna be like a whole thing. Wow, I, mm. Shortest stream ever, not. <laughs> what? I didn't know. <laughs> I, gu I guess I, I guess I jam. I, I genuinely thought there was gonna be more. I thought it was gonna be like a whole, a whole thing. I had swiped. I, I prepared myself emotionally. I, 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 I'm real, I'm gonna be honest, I'm kind of embarrassed. I really thought there, I was readying myself for the whole final thing. I, it was, it was, it was, it was like 40 minutes. <laughs>
I, I really don't have anything else to say. I, I'm embarrassed. Uh, I mean, I guess that's the what? It, that's the, the the risk you take with the the blind playthrough, right? I, I don't know when it's gonna end. I feel, like, I feel like that meme with the guy like mining, and he stops just short of the diamonds. That that's me. I ended my last Chaos Head stream right right. Up at the edge of the, the end end of the game. And now I'm now I'm <laughs> paying the price. I don't know. That was great. I love I love the game. Heavy. Heavy stuff, dude. I, I, I honestly I think I will continue to think about Remy's ending. It, it that that one hurt me. That one hurt me a lot. Yeah, get wrecked, Sarah. You're the worst. <laughs> she was the true villain of the game. I think I think we all know that. Well, uh... Hmm. Oh, do I need to press a button? I need to press a button. Blue sky... <laughs> uh, um, yeah, uh, yep, it sure did. Continue shortcut has been unlocked. I don't know what that means. Wait. Congratulations! I did it! Well. That's the... <laughs> At least I have the YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> Easy pe- Oh, that's cool! Oh, that's neat. I got- You got the- you get the blue sky, you get the peaceful, peaceful menu music. Oh, that's great. I don't know what to do now. 99% uh, CG completion? Wait, where did I, where did I go wrong? What did I miss? What did I not get? Probably, probably a delusion. Oh, right, my, uh, my, my spreadsheet. Where's my spreadsheet? Which ones didn't I do? A bunch that- oops. Yeah, there were a bunch on like chapter 9 or something, where like... Most of the routes branched off on like chapter 8 or chapter 7. So that's probably- it's probably one of those delusions. I mean, I guess I could do that, right? Like, that's- that's not a bad idea. I- I feel awkward ending like- been 45 minutes. I do something, right? That's a that's an awkwardly short stream, you know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I, I oh god, I have to figure out where though. All right, so delusions 41 through 45 have un untapped or delusion triggers rather. Let's see, do I have any saves? I guess. There would be a auto save, right? For like one of my earlier auto saves, it would be. Oh God, where's? This is. Oh, oh, they're numbered. Oh, they're numbered. Good, 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 good. Oh, but they're they're they go backwards. Mm, less good. Uh, 40, 48. So here. Yeah, here we go. These are... Nope, just kidding. I guess maybe they override maximum 48. Oh, God. Is that something about a shortcut? Here. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Oh. Chaos had you spoil me. All right. Uh, I don't actually remember where, like, which chapters they were. I'm going to say nine. Luckily, I also labeled them, so hopefully I remember which ones are which. Sure. Okay. It's a weird way to end the stream, but I'm doing it, because I really do want to... Uh, I, I want to see all the delusion variations, you know? Give me that... Oh yeah, this is the... Weird. All reality comes crumbling down. Okay. Uh, is this... Oh, this is literally it. Okay, perfect. 
So I did the neutral one. I'm going to try. Oh, actually, I'm going to save. I'm going to literally make a save right here. Boom, boom, boom. So we'll start with the the, the G one. Yeah, I, I think I, I picked the neutral one because she told me not to do it anymore. And so I was like, okay, you know, fair enough. Nah, I want to see it. Cause I I'm missing a I'm missing a, a a gallery piece. Thank you very much. I cut her off. I put my hands tight over my ears. She's telling me the world is not real. You know, whatever. Oh, green whirlpool. Oh, she just says no. <laughs> she just straight up says no. That's great. As I tried to escape into a delusion, Rimi's voice pulled me into reality. She said, she straight up said, no, no. All right, well, let's, I assume it's gonna be the same for the other one, but I gotta, I gotta mark it off on the, sp the spreadsheet. I made a, I still. <laughs> yeah, I made a spreadsheet, what about it? All right, load, load this bad boy. <laughs> No. Stop it. Just knock it off. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Next one. Oh god. I, I I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to do the next one because I I just I just don't want to do it. おだん。有限会社新興のチュンゴクセバックとか。ジーレートとの関係はあの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、
jumped out into the road again, hoping that this time I could find salvation. Bright lights of a car... In piercing noise of a car's horn, the unnerving sound of screeching brakes. Come on, kill... Is he just gonna do it again? I wanna see it again. I don't wanna read it again. Yeah. Alright. And again, I was on the side. No, I'm dead. All right. Why did I keep trying to escape into my delusions? Did I... I screamed with a shaking voice. I ran onto the road again. And I'm not reading it again. No, I refuse. Nothing had changed. Felt like I was going crazy. Did I actually not want to die? Or was I already dead and this was me dreaming? Maybe my great my brain gained some oh my god. My brain gained some kind of super sensory powers and be just before its death, and I was hallucinating this scene again and again in the single second before I was about to die for real. Not a chance in hell. Tried to run out of the road again, mostly out of sheer frustration. But my legs were shaking. I couldn't move from where I stood. I'd seen delusions of my own death three times. The pain I'd imagined felt real and terrified me. <laughs> Made no sense. I wasn't even sure how I felt anymore. Did I, did I want to die? Or did I want to live? Which was it? I clenched my jaw. Closed my eyes. I told myself again and again that I wanted to die. Only then was I able to move my legs forward. I'm not. Oh my god, enough. Stop! My we denied. Back on the sidewalk in perfect health. Alright. This is getting excessive. I will find it. I will find the one. Green. One of these is gonna give me the, the, the final piece. It has to. Truly. You're the worst. For the stinging pain in my chest. Even Saratan was being cruel to me. She's the actual worst. Literal devil. <笑>タッキーはさ、この1ヶ月ぐらい調子に乗ってたよね。Going back? さ、戻る。誰とも会っちゃダメ。誰も信じちゃダメ。本物なのか偽物なのかとかどうでもいい。そんなの誰にも証明できないし。タッキーは私だけ見てればいいさ。前はそれだけで十分幸せだったっしょ。そう感じなくなっちゃったのは、タッキーに近づいてきたあの女子たちのせいだよ。あんなあばずれビッチどもとはさ、会わない方がいいって
Alright. I know what must be done. Give me the... I got three more. <laughs> Give me that. Give me th this one. It was not a mistake. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I think I found it. Oh, no. I don't want to look. I, I can already tell this is going to this is going to scar me for life. But for some reason, she was soaked, even though it wasn't raining. Drops of water were pouring off her school uniform. Her head was slumped forward and her face was hidden by her bangs. I couldn't see her expression. Just a second ago, she'd been yelling at me. She'd been yelling at the top of her lungs, but now she wasn't saying a word. She stretched an arm out toward me. It was her right arm. There was no ar no hand attached to the wrist. Please don't pan up. The stump was hidden by her sleeve, and I couldn't see it clearly, but her hand definitely wasn't there. <laughs> Was this was it Nemesis? It was a low voice that didn't sound like Nanami at all. <laughs> Stars. Slowly, Nanami looked up. Please don't pan up. Her skin was pale and rough. Her lips were dark black. Her eye sockets were hollow. There were no eyeballs in them, just pools of blackness. A ma oh my god. A maggot crawled out from the sunken hole. This was a corpse. Nanami's corpse was moving and talking. <laughs> Boy, I sure am glad I, I chose to do this. Nanami's left hand grabbed me by the throat. It stank. It was so cold I shivered. Grip was incredibly tight. It was hard to believe a girl could be this strong. Not even many boys were this strong. Felt like my neck's bones were going to shatter. It hurt to breathe. I coughed. Her grip got tighter. I was going to die. I flailed my hands, but stopped just as quickly as I started. If you're going to kill me, then come on, do it. It made me feel a little better knowing that Nanami's ghost would be what killed me. It was my fault that she ended up like that. She was the per perfect person to do it. So, come on. Hey, good, they didn't pan up. I'm, boy, I'm glad they didn't pan up. That was horrifying. I closed my eyes. I let her do what she wanted. Come on, snap my neck. Do it. Anami's corpse disappeared. Instead of standing at the door, I was sitting on the sofa. I was holding Saratan in my hand. Anami was standing in my room, talking. She had a bandage on her right wrist, but her hand was still there. Her skin looked normal, her clothes weren't wet, her eyes were there. I realized that what I'd just seen was a delusion. It was disappointing. Why did it have to be a delusion? Why couldn't it be real? Wow, that's... Boni, maybe was that it? Was that the thing? I... If that if that was it, I'm gonna call it. I'm out. That was that was horrifying, and I don't want to see any more horrifying shit. I did it. I'm scarred for life. All right. I'm officially. Whoops. That's not right. But I did it. Victory. Perfect. Achieved. One hundo percento completion. All right, I'm out. Shortest stream ever. That's not true. I think I've, I think I had one that was like five minutes because I fucked up the settings or something. Anyways, I'm done. Bye. This again. Bye.